Another topic that is related to uh, everything we've gone through so far is the idea of balance and stability. Now this is something that you probably have a lot of intuition about and this is a place where your intuition is not necessarily going to lead you astray. Our results here hopefully agree with your intuition. Let's imagine a car that is starting to tilt such that it's only on one wheel. We call the distance between the wheels as the base of support. And as long as the center of mass is between those, we see that the gravitational torque is going to rotate it back in the right direction. So in this point, the figure on the left, we would say that my pivot point is here. And so when I think about my gravitational torque, tau grav, that's just going to bring it that way. So it's always going to come down and be on the wheels. Now let's look at the second picture. Now, the pivot point is there and now the torque due to gravity is actually going to cause the car to fall over, to not come back to set on the wheels. So this is in general the phenomena is if your gravitational torque from the center of mass is pulling it back to be supported, you're fine. It's going to be stable, but otherwise it's going to roll over there's a critical angle where it's technically balanced but only until for instance the wind blows and in that case what we see here is that's when the center of mass of the vehicle is right above the pivot point and for this we can create an equation for that critical angle and in this case it's the inverse tangent of t where t is actually representing the distance between the wheels what's called the track width and then h is the height of the center of mass so you could have figured this out again, this inverse tangent of this triangle. There's no physics here. This is just, just math. But something we see is that for many objects, there's going to be a critical angle over which it tips over. And that's just going to occur when the center of mass is completely over the pivot. And you're going to have some situations where an object has two pivots. And that's even the case for the car. If it started to tip the other direction, obviously the other wheel becomes the pivot point. So again, nothing too surprising here, but hopefully a physics way of looking at something you have some intuition for. One place where this starts to be a little more surprising is when you look at an object or a person who is balanced and you don't expect it. So this is a picture from the book showing a dancer and the dancer is balanced on point. And the idea being that the balancer, the, the dancer is stable. She's not falling over in either direction. So if that's true, then we know that this is the pivot point and that her center of mass must be right above it. Because this is really narrow, right? There's not a lot of forgiveness. So her, her center of mass is somewhere in between the pivot point from on point, but it can't be much farther over in either direction or else she would fall. So then there are a variety of toys and little tricks you can play that seem to do something crazy. In this point, this is a glass of water with a toothpick that goes through a fork. The fork tines are intertwined with a spoon. And so if you look, this fork and this spoon are just hanging out on this toothpick and the whole thing just looks crazy. Like, how is this not falling? And the answer is, it's balanced. That we have to have a center of mass and the center of mass needs to be over the pivot point. Well, where's the pivot point? The pivot point is here. So it's hard to see what's going on in a three-dimensional picture but the center of mass must also be here. So your pivot point and your center of mass must be in the same place. Now, note that in this case, the center of mass is occurring in a place where the fork and spoon aren't. That's okay. Think about it like this. Say I had a donut, tasty, tasty donut with some sprinkles, obviously. Where's the center of mass of the donut? The center of mass of the donut is clearly in the donut hole. So you know if the center of mass of a donut can be where there isn't donut, that clearly the center of mass of this crazy fork and spoon contraption can also be where there's not actually fork or spoon. So 
uh, keep that in mind. Um, it's just a way of, again, thinking through some really specific scenarios, but understanding why, like that game where it's a little, I say game, a toy where it's a little bird that can balance on your fingers. There's not any magic there or magnets or anything like that. It's just center of mass and gravity.